Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with Ham Radio Answers episode 135. We return to the MFJ 1788 loop antenna, subject of previous videos number 59, 63, 64, and 65, which you can find on my channel. This is a magnetic loop antenna made by MFJ that covers 7 to 21 megahertz. Its sister antenna, the MFJ 1786, covers 10 through 30 megahertz. Like all magnetic loop antennas, the tuning is critical, and it can cover only a few kilohertz of spectrum at once. To aid in tuning, it has a remote control seen here, which drives a motor inside the antenna housing that controls the tuning capacitor. Tuning is very sharp and takes some practice. This morning, I used it to check into a 20 meter net. The signal was quite satisfactory going both ways. It was a rather remarkable conversation for 20 meters into the San Luis Valley, about 100 miles away, but at the moment we've just had a major solar storm, so propagation is weird. I'm revisiting the 1788 because all previous testing has been with the antenna in a vertical position, as shown in the photo. This time, I wanted to try mounting it atop the house in a horizontal position. The horizontal position is approved and indeed recommended if your height above ground or ground plane is greater than 20 feet. It's currently on a five foot mast atop our roof on a tripod originally put there for a different antenna. I've got quite a few antennas in the backyard, including the cobweb, which I use for comparison here, my VHF antennas, the antennas on the roof for our local internet service provider, and my receive-only antenna. Since the last 1788 testing, I've acquired the SDR Play RSP1A, which does a marvelous job of displaying the entire spectrum for each ham band in turn. I set the rig, the antenna, and the RSP1A to 20 meters so I could do some experiments. The RSP1A is connected to the RF output of my Yesu FTDX3000, so it sees what the radio sees. Let me walk you through what I discovered. Let's compare received signal strength with that from my MFJ cobweb antenna, which served as the reference for all the tests. Both have horizontal polarization, so the cobweb is a better choice than my vertical for one-on-one -on -one comparisons. Here's the 20 meter comparison. The bands were dead, so I picked this signal. I don't know what it is, but it's steady, so I took screenshots both using the 1788 and using the cobweb. The results are interesting. It actually appears that within its narrow bandwidth, the 1788 is rather more sensitive, picking up both more noise and more signal. In both cases, the signal-to-noise ratio is about two divisions, or about 20 dB. So I think the RF noise floor is about the same for both antennas, but with the 1788 being a bit more sensitive within its bandpass, it picks up both signal and noise more. I do note, when I spoke with the net earlier, the noise was rather a bit much, so I backed down on the RF gain control, which made much of that noise floor go away. Now, you may recall from previous videos that I was unimpressed with the 1788's performance on 40 meters. I remain ambivalent. Here is a signal on 40 using both the 1788 and the cobweb. The 1788 signal is stronger than the cobweb signal. I won't know more until the bands return to normal. I want to point out a couple things about the tuning of the antenna. The tuning procedure in the manual requires that you transmit a steady signal, such as a continuous CW signal, while tuning. I'm fortunate that my Yesu FTDX3000 has a feature that in single sideband mode, Pressing a straight key will cause the transceiver to transmit a tuning tone. The power of this tone is adjustable down to 5 watts without affecting the sideband output power, which I leave at 100 watts. 
so I can just press the key while tuning. Be sure to identify when you're done. Oddly, this handy feature isn't mentioned in the rig's manual. Note that the bandwidth of the tuning is not large, but try to tune slightly off frequency of any QSO that you're trying to join so you don't cause QRM. It should be possible to get the SWR down to one to one or very close to that. Note that you should use only the remote control tuner and make sure that your rig's tuner or any other tuners are set to bypass. The remote control works by looking at the SWR, then stopping the tuning motor when the SWR looks good. It still needs to be peaked just right though, so fine tuning controls are used to push the tuning motor back and forth a tiny titch. You can see this effect in the video of the SDR screen. Yes, I'm using the fine tuning control, and it still sweeps across the screen mighty quickly. With the SDR waterfall, it's an easier matter to get the tuning centered around the signal of interest. The remote control is supposed to beep when it achieves coarse tuning. Mine doesn't. Oh well. The remote control uses the terms up and down. It would be easy to assume that these refer to the frequency at which the antenna is tuned. They don't. Up means the antenna's capacitance goes up. This causes the resonant frequency to go down, not up. I noticed this while watching the SDR display. Again, the antenna is supposed to be tuned by looking at the standing wave ratio, or SWR, but in fact it's easier to move around a band by looking at a high-resolution waterfall. My RSP1A is connected to the RF output of my FTDX3000, so it sees what my radio sees. Unfortunately, not every rig these days offers either an RF or an IF output. If they do, you can hook your SDR radio directly to it. If you are in the passband, the SWR should be quite low, but be sure to check it before you start calling CQ. So where am I on the MFJ1788? The antenna performs well on 20, but not well on 40. I didn't do any tests on uh, 30, 17, or 15 meters. I think it should probably perform okay on those. In channel news, be sure to check www.dcastler.com slash upcoming videos for the upcoming queue. And check out www.dcastler.com slash support for ways to help support this channel, including the tip jar, the Patreon link, the amateur extra training videos on a thumb drive, and some cool Amazon links. Also, please be sure to subscribe, share, and click like. I have ordered the new ARRL Technician License Manual and will shortly begin to refresh all the tech training videos. When done, I'll also offer them on a thumb drive. Since the tech videos are by and large shorter than the amateur extra videos, I might be able to reduce the price by using a smaller thumb drive. Stay safe and get on the air. Until we next meet, 73. Next time, we'll talk about a cool 3D printed drop-in case with the QRP Labs QCX radio.